How's it going, my friends? Welcome back. My name's Brandon, and this channel is all about design. I mainly make videos where I create designs from scratch and show you my entire process throughout the whole thing. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I promise you won't regret it. Now for today's project, we're gonna be doing a restaurant menu. Now this isn't gonna be a full menu per se, it's mainly just gonna be one of those single page menus that a restaurant gives people to showcase a special or maybe a particular deal they've got going on right now. And in this case, our restaurant is featuring their rib dinners. There's very few things I love more than barbecue ribs, so that's why we're doing this. As you can see, this handout is pretty narrow because we don't have that much content to show off here. The front is mainly just something that's meant to be highly visual to grab people's attention and make them want to order the food. And the back is where you can actually see the menu items and their descriptions and prices and all that good stuff. And I think we should go ahead and get started with the front because that's likely gonna be more complex and it'll help us develop our visual style that we can also apply on the back. So just to start off, I think the easiest way to get people interested in food is just to show them pictures of that food. So I've managed to round up this picture of some beautifully cooked ribs, and I think that'll work perfect for this. I would actually like to make these a little bigger though, but I don't want them to fall off the edge of the page. So maybe we can just overlap them a little bit, and then we can just scale those up. And adding just a little shadow between these will help visually separate them. And as for the style for this menu, I'd really like to lean into that rustic barbecue vibe. But I also wanna make sure this has a fairly premium feel because this is not one of those overly cheesy barbecue joints. So with that theme in mind, maybe we could pull some wood into the background. Now we wanna start getting some other content in here. I feel like having ribs just as a title on this would probably be pretty helpful for the customer just so they can immediately see this is a menu for ribs. Now that's pretty nice, but the top does still feel a little bit empty to me. So what can we do to help fill in this space? Maybe instead of just using the word ribs, we can add a few other descriptive words alongside that. These ribs are gonna be sweet, smoky, and they'll fall right off the bone. And really, I think it'd be nice if all of this made a complete sentence, but I don't think I just wanna type it out like that. It's just not that interesting. We need to jazz it up a bit. And this actually seems like the perfect opportunity to do some type of word collage. You guys may have seen these before, but it's basically where you take individual words in a sentence and you use different fonts and styles and you basically just piece those together like a puzzle. So what we wanna do is take our sentence and separate all of these words. The trick to doing these is that you want your words to form a nice, neat shape. So I've just made this rectangular bounding box and the goal here is to make sure that all of these words fit snugly inside of here and take up the entire space. Since ribs is definitely the most important word here, let's start with that. I'll just make it bigger and probably turn it all caps. And for fun, I wanna pick something that's big and bold and has that rustic vibe to it. And now let's just work our way from the bottom up. Since fall off the bone is hyphenated, we kinda need to treat that as one word. So we'll just put that right in there. Let's throw Smokey in there next. And you'll notice for the font for that, I picked something that was fairly similar to the ribs, but it still has its own unique character. And a good tip for when you're doing these is that when you have two words that have a similar style font, you wanna separate those with a word that has a different style. So in this case, since both Smokey and Ribs are these slab serif fonts, we wanna do something different for Fall Off the Bone. Maybe just a simple sans serif. Next, we can get our sweet text in there. And as for font, I want something that's fairly playful since the barbecue sauce is mainly the things that give these ribs the sweetness. And sauce is something that's a little more free flowing. It's not super rigid. So let's match that. And I think I'm actually gonna add the word super in here just to embolden that sweetness a little more. And I'll just stretch that out a little bit to fill in the space. Normally I don't recommend stretching fonts, but in this case, I'll let it slide. We still need to squeeze our and in here somewhere. I think the only place that can go is between the sweet and smoky. So maybe I can just squish this a little bit, maybe this a tad too. Now obviously that doesn't look very good because we have all of this empty space here, but I think we can remedy that by just using a simple container. And then we can just cut the word and right out of that. So that'll help us fill in the space. And you also might notice that the thickness of this bar is roughly similar to the thickness of some of these other letters. And I just did that so the whole thing would feel more cohesive. And now I think I wanna start bringing in some more visuals to really help tell the story of these ribs. And if there's one thing that all barbecue has involved at some point in the cooking process, it's fire. So I found this really cool stock image of this fire. And we're just gonna place that at the bottom of the menu. And we'll just switch that blend mode to linear dodge. That way it hides all the black parts, but we still get this really vibrant color coming from the flames. It's almost like we're watching these ribs being cooked. And you know, even to customers that see this, like subconsciously when they see that fire, they're gonna imagine that these ribs were cooked fresh just for them. And when it comes to their table, they just know it's gonna be nice and warm. And the only problem we might have now though, is that it kinda looks like our wooden background is on fire. And that's probably not the message we wanna send. So maybe we could try switching up the background to a material that doesn't burn so easily. You know, maybe something like this metal. 
And what I really like about this metal background is that it kind of mimics the inside of a smoker, which as you know are made of metal. And to me, it really helps this fire make a little more sense because it's like, this is the fire that's inside of the smoker cooking all of this meat. Now I kind of like the way this is looking right now, but I gotta be honest, I'm not entirely sold on the image of these ribs, mainly just because they're so small compared to the rest of the page. So maybe I'll just take a peek around and see if I can find something that works a bit better. Now this is what I'm talking about. I definitely like the angle it was shot from. It really gives us a good look at the product. And I also think this will help us better fill in some of this space because just like the menu itself, the rib is tall and pretty thin. At this point though, I almost feel like the text is just taking too much attention away from the actual food. Because remember, the food is what's gonna sell people on buying something from this menu. They're not gonna buy something just because they read these words. So what if we just made this rib really big? Now that definitely brings more attention to the food, but it also covers up the text we made up here. However, I'm not entirely sure that's a bad thing because like I said, the words aren't gonna sell this product. So maybe we can actually embrace this effect. What if we even duplicated that block of text a few times? That way the text is starting to act more like a background to the food rather than the focal point of the page. And I bet we could even stretch this beyond the page bounds and that's really gonna make this feel like more of a background. And I actually really like this because even though a lot of these words are covered up, you can still clearly see the fall off the bone ribs text right up here. So if the giant rack of ribs on the very front doesn't clue you into what this is, then we've still got some backup text here to help you out. And I guarantee you that when people get this menu, they'll spend some time trying to figure out what these other words that are partially covered up actually are. And it may sound silly, but that extra curiosity and interaction that people are gonna be having with this menu is gonna make them more invested in it. And when they're more invested with the menu, by association, they're more invested in the products the menu is showcasing. And that just means that there's actually a slightly higher chance they'll order something from it. And now to match the rest of the aesthetic, I think we need to go in and rough up our text a little bit. It's just too clean right now. So I'm just gonna group those all together and give that group a layer mask. And I'm gonna pick a really gritty brush. And you'll notice if I try to paint into that mask now, we just leave this really harsh streak through our text. And that's not quite what we want. We could try turning down the opacity, but that also leaves a streak just in a lighter color. But instead, if we just turn down the flow, we'll get a much more pleasing result that's not so harsh and it's a lot easier to control. I'll make that a little more weared down by overlaying this wooden texture on top of it. Now, I think it's time we go ahead and add a light source into this scene. Obviously, we're gonna get a really nice warm glow from our fire down here, but I think that's more of a secondary light source, so we need a main light source somewhere. So I think I'd really like this image to feel a little bit moody. So I don't really want a soft blanketed light. I think instead, I'd like to go with something a little more focused. So maybe since we have this fire on the bottom right here, we could have more of a spotlight or something like that coming in from the top left. And we could even bring in this image of a spotlight to really help sell that effect. Now not only does that light make the scene feel more dynamic, but it also helps draw the eye right to the food, and that's what we want. Now let's go ahead and get a nice drop shadow on our ribs. And if you're ever in a situation to where the normal drop shadow doesn't look so good, you'd prefer to have a longer shadow with a nice fall off, what you can do is go ahead and start with that normal drop shadow, convert it to a separate layer, and then give it a motion blur filter. Make sure the direction is the direction you want your shadow to fall off in. You can just increase that distance and that'll soften up the shadow. And of course, our central rib right here is gonna be affected by all of this new light in the scene. So we're gonna to need to add some lighting and shading to it. Finally, we can go ahead and add in some glow from our fire down here. And we certainly couldn't forget one of the main elements that makes barbecue taste so good, as well as something that's produced by this fire, smoke. So we'll add a little bit of that in here down at the bottom, like it's coming up from the fire. And if we're pretending this is inside of a smoker, one of the areas you'll definitely see a lot of smoke is right where this beam is shining. Because all of that light has to travel through this smoky atmosphere and it's really gonna make it visible. And since our ribs here are actually resting on top of our background, maybe we could add in a little bit of barbecue sauce behind this as a presentation piece, but also like it's running off of the ribs. We can stick that behind the rib and then get rid of these white parts by using a blend if. I feel that something like this really helps bring the scene together and elevates our presentation. And now I'll just add a few more drizzles in different places to help balance this whole image out. And of course, all of this new sauce we added will need some lighting. And I think to finish this piece off, we need to add in the one element that all good food presentations have, a little bit of garnish. 
And it's funny how that little twig of rosemary just really elevates this piece. It makes the food feel more premium, even though we've got all this grunge and rustic stuff going on in the background. And if you remember, that's what we wanted all along. We wanted a good old fashioned barbecue, but done at a really high quality. I'm pretty happy with the front now, so why don't we go ahead and move on to the back. And I'll just keep the front of the menu visible while we work on the back. That way we can reference it and make sure that both sides match each other. As for the background for this, I'd like to go with something dark gray. That way it mimics the front. Now I think adding in that metal texture from the front would just make things too repetitive. So why don't we go with something a little more clean, maybe like some paper. And we could even add another layer of texture on that just to make it more complex. And since the front of this menu is really complex visually, I'd like to keep the back fairly simple and clean. And so to start laying out this text, I'm actually gonna jump over into Illustrator just because it's so much easier to work on text in here than in Photoshop. So to start this off, you can see we have three menu items and then a little bit of extra info down here telling you that all of these entrees come with either a soup or salad and your choice of two sides and fresh bread. So I'll just go ahead and separate all of this information and we can just center that up right in the middle of the page. So really the main thing we need to work on here is our hierarchy. Certainly the thing that needs to stand out the most on this page are the item names. So I think we should make those bigger and give them a pretty bold font. I also made those uppercase just to match some of the letters on the front of the menu too. And just a little tip, sometimes if you want to make titles feel a bit more elegant, you can just increase the spacing between the letters. And you know, each of these rib items actually has the type of animal that that particular cut comes from. For example, we've got pork baby back ribs, lamb riblets, and beef short ribs. So what if we just removed that from the name? That way we can make the base of the name bigger, and then we can just use the type of meat as more of a subtitle. And of course, we'll want to give that a different font. And since we do have a lot of white going on here, maybe we could give that a bit of a different color too. Now, as for these descriptions, I think I'd like to tone those down a bit. That way they're not so overwhelming. So we can just make them smaller. And just for the sake of consistency, maybe we can use the same font that we used in the animal name. Just not all uppercase, of course. Now for the price. I'd like to keep this really simple and straightforward. Each of these items has a half portion and a full portion available, and I like them displayed side by side, but I do think we could improve the hierarchy a bit by making the number bigger and the portion size smaller. And one thing I'm also gonna do is get rid of these dollar signs and the cents. It's actually fairly common practice to do in upscale restaurants because it just makes things look so much cleaner and people just know when they see a number on a menu that that's a price. They don't need that extra dollar sign there to tell them that. And for the fonts, once again, I think we can just stick within the same family as our description and our animal title. And these could probably use some type of element to separate them a bit more. So maybe just a simple line straight between them would work. And now I'll just copy the same styling over to our other items. And last but not least, our extra text down here, I think we can just style that in a very similar fashion to our food descriptions. And maybe just to give a visual clue that this piece of text applies to all of these and not just this bottom one, we can separate it a little bit from the pack, move it down perhaps, and we could even add in one of these dividers. I think this is looking really nice and clean right now, but I can't help but think that since our front is so highly visual, maybe we should put something visual on the back as well. Nothing to the same degree, but just a little bit of something to help better tie it together. Now hear me out for a second. I found these cool sketches of animals online, and it just so happens that on this sheet, we have every animal that is on our menu. So I'm thinking maybe we take each of these animals and use them as a watermark behind the menu items. We can just place those right there and lower down the opacity. And I really just think that helps give some nice visual interest to the page. And it can even help the customers be able to identify these different items more easily because it literally has a big picture of the animal right there. Now that we've added those though, we might wanna bolden up the descriptions of these items a little bit just so we make sure people can read them. Alrighty, I think the last thing I wanna do here is take these back into Photoshop and we'll just add a tiny bit of grit to these letters just so they mimic some of this stuff on the front. And here's our final result. I had a lot of fun for this video, and I really hope you guys enjoyed the journey we just took. If you did, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I'll be making a lot more of these types of videos, and I want to make sure you see them. So when you subscribe, make sure you click that little bell and change your notification preference to all. That way, every time I post a video, you'll actually get a notification. I want to really thank you guys for the constant support on this channel. It means a lot to me, and I really can't wait to see what the future holds. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.